Hello everyone, we're actually here today at the Avalon's Grand Resort in Warren, Ohio to talk to you about the microbiome and inflammation as it relates to lifestyle medicine. My name is Dr. Michelle Thompson and I am Integrative and Lifestyle Family Medicine. My practice is in Hermitage, Pennsylvania with University of Pittsburgh Medical Center. I uh, specialize in food as medicine, mind-body medicine, and uh, try to enable my patients to become their own best healer, uh, giving them tools that they need to take care of their lives. I'm with my colleague, Dr. Melissa Kerr, who has joined me for this lecture today in the microbiome and inflammatory reactions. And my name is Dr. Melissa Kerr. I'm an integrative physical therapist. I have completed my certification in functional nutrition for chronic pain. I am a yoga instructor. I teach Tai Chi and Qigong. And in my practice, I have a cash-based practice in the area and an insurance-based practice that I work in. And my role is to integrate nutrition and techniques such as yoga and Tai Chi into um, the non-traditional practice into the traditional practice. And that is what we're here speaking about today. Yeah, so we came together really. We chose to, um, we were asked to speak at this summit uh, for weight loss, but we chose to film here at the Grand Resort because uh, I'm working on a wellness program, which is a life-changing wellness weekend and disease reversal, deprescribing, uh, that you can actually come here on site to the Avalon's Grand Resort and have a life-changing wellness weekend. So um, here we are today and we're on location and we wanna to talk to you about ways to make you healthier and happier. So um, we together have Be Well Therapies, which is just collaboration with other modalities uh, that we all work together and we try to pull our resources to help you help yourselves. So our website is www.bewelltherapies.org and uh, we have more lectures and things, classes that we can actually, um, you can sign up for and free things that we have on there. Um, and we will also link the Avalon's Grand Resort website uh, with, this, with this video as well. So. Um, we're going to start today by talking about digestion and the microbiome. So really, everything begins in the mind. And so I think all too often we sit down and we start to eat, but we're really just, you know, not thinking about the process of eating. And with that being said, you know, we really want to stop and take a deep breath and activate the parasympathetic nervous system, which is responsible for rest and digestion before we begin the process of eating. So um, we're going to start by just taking a deep breath. In through our nose and out through our mouth. And just that simple process of soft belly breathing when you take a deep breath in through your nose. Saying soft and out through your mouth saying belly. Just something like that can actually just prepare you for mindful eating and a better digestive system. So knowing that it starts in the mind and that that's what really activates the digestive process and the enzymes, um, there are a hundred different diseases that are associated with food. So we're just going to talk about some of them today and some of these reactions that can occur that creates this inflammatory state. So what the heck is the microbiome, right? Like what is the microbiome? Good question. Yeah. What is it? Like let's just go back to basics. So the microbiome is bacteria that live within your body. We all have them. It's within our body and on our skin and it's bacteria, it's viruses, it's protozoa, it's yeast, and we, our body wants us to have that balance, that homeostasis, so that we can be well. Uh, but what happens is, is we have some disruptors that occur, one major one being stress, it creates this disruption in the micro microbiome and it sets the path off, which is a large part of the disease processes that we see. So we're trying to, um, activate, put this microbiome back in balance so that we can decrease the inflammation in the body so that you don't have these diseases. So some of the big things like um, uh, skin infections and GI infections and bloating and um, things like that or, you know, um, stress bowel. response, irritable bowel, yeah, those things are actually big problems for people. And even if we just start with that soft belly breathing and activate that, it can be a big benefit. So what kind of things do you want to 
chat about today, Dr. Kerr? I think when we hear stress is responsible for a large number of diseases that occur, I think our minds tend to go to stress, right? And, and when we tell someone, let's not stress so much, let's just relax, I think there is a phrase that never in the history of telling someone to relax has someone actually relaxed when they're not very relaxed. So understanding and deconstructing stress is incredibly important. What we think and what we believe is also incredibly important. So if we don't hold value in the choices we're making to help ourselves, we're probably not going to see some of the outcomes that we could if we believe in what we're choosing to do to help ourselves. So stress will always create inflammation. Inflammation oftentimes is seen as a not good thing, but in fact, inflammation, we should be grateful for it because we need it. We just don't need it in a large amount and we don't need it in the way that causes our nervous system to flip a switch and become highly inflamed, highly stressed and highly toxic. And sometimes we get stuck in that state or frozen there. And from that, we can have this array of disease processes that continue to unfurl. So when we look at stress causing inflammation, and then we look at how can we manage inflammation, there's a whole variety of ways we can start to approach it. Um, not just from food, but yes, also with food. Yeah, so that brings me really into the, the thoughts of um, mindful medicine and you know, the lifestyle medicine, the pieces of lifestyle medicine that we think about. We think about sleep. So I used to think food was everything, but now I think I've decided that sleep is everything because if you're not sleeping well, then you're not going to make good choices. You're not going to feel like getting up and going to the gym. You're not going to, um, you're going to have anxiety because you're sleep deprived. So, you know, I think it's really important that we focus on sleep and we make sure that our patients are uh, sleeping well and that should be eight hours a night and that's restful sleep so a lot of times we investigate and find sleep apnea is a big trigger for people and we treat the sleep apnea and you know a lot of people will tell me uh, as a physician they'll say I don't want to treat that and I say well what, you don't want oxygen I mean really seriously like shouldn't you have some oxygen in the night you know you're going eight hours without right. oxygen uh, so that's important. So sleep is important. And then that drives you into wanting to exercise mm -hmm. and using the different modalities. So the reason I partnered up with Dr. Kerr to have her help me help my patients is that she offers all kinds of exercise forms that maybe you're not even thinking of. So Tai Chi, Qigong, um, yoga, and just teaching you how to move. So as an integrative physical therapist, she teaches you how to move safely and healthfully and you know throughout our relationship together she actually has um, gotten her her uh, education in food as medicine as well and started incorporating that into her physical therapy treatment plans which is very important and very powerful mm -hmm. so exercise is important it could be a very good way so just going for a walk or getting outside in nature you know earthing force bathing type of things feeling the energy of the outdoors the sunshine hearing the birds um, you know, runners, you know, whatever it is that you want to call your exercise, but movement matters. Movement matters. And listening to the examples that were just given, the majority of those examples are not aerobically driven examples. We need aerobic exercise, but aerobic exercise tends to fuel our um, sympathetic nervous system, our fight or flight, which puts us in a stress response state. So when we look at exercise more as movement and we look at contemplative movement and movement where we engage our breath, which flosses our parasympathetic, our relaxation response system, then we start to balance the inflammatory response better. So there are a hundred different ways to find movement. You just need to find one. And I think it's important to note that if you don't like one, try another. You'll mm -hmm. find something. And actually, so a lot of people will say to me, I don't like yoga, or for whatever reason, it's, they, they, just, they don't prefer that. But maybe they like Tai Chi. Maybe mm -hmm. they like Qigong. Um, so you can do free classes that are online to just see what you like. And now that everything is online, there's so much more that is available. Yes, it's accessible. So, so with that, sleep, we've mm -hmm. talked about exercise, you know, um, next, you know, the standard American diet. So we're oh. going to roll into the food piece. And really, that's where a lot of the microbiome disruption comes from. 
So the standard American diet, when you're thinking about going to the grocery store and getting processed foods or packaged foods, there's none of those things we talked about, the bacteria, the, the yeast, the protozoa, the viruses, on the you know, boxed packaged food. The so, nutrients have been stripped. Absolutely. So you want to make sure that you are shopping uh, in the produce section and around the outside. And we actually have on our website something called Shop with a Doc. I was going out into the community to Aldi and teaching my patients and the community to shop. And then we just decided one day to film it because we said, you know, I don't need to keep going to the grocery store all the time with everybody. <laughs> Why not let just film it? So it's there available for you to watch and it's just called Shop with a Doc on Be Well Therapies. And you know, what you're looking for really is eating real food. Um, and then the diversification of your nutrients by color, like thinking really about the eating the rainbow. So it seems simple, but really the reds, the blues, the greens, the yellows, the oranges, and you're thinking are about, hard. Yeah, they are but hard, they're there. but they're, they're there, there, but you have to get them and they're very important. So in each of those colors is phytonutrients that our body needs. And when you're missing something, you have to put those different things back in. And each of us is missing something different. Mm -hmm. You know, it could have been that your microbiome didn't just get disrupted from the standard American diet. It could be that it came from an antibiotic mm -hmm. that you were given. And unfortunately, we've probably all had to take an antibiotic at some point in our lifetime. And resetting that microbiome is going to be very unique and specific to you. But those are the big things, I think, to, to think about. Right, and one other thing is that the research shows us that most people eat the same five foods. Sometimes it just takes a different um, flavor, if you will. Sometimes your food might look um, more Asian one night and more Italian the next night, but essentially it's the same five foods. And from that, they might be five of the best foods, but if there is not variety, at some point your system is going to need that rainbow. So if we don't work at it, and it's work, it is work. then we're going to be missing something and we can see disease processes and inflammation result from, from eating those same foods. Right, and so you know, some people will say, well, why not just um, have a probiotic supplement? And really, you're not going to get the variety out of the supplement, and you don't know from when it was in the processing plant to the store, to your house, to your digestive system, how, you, you know, how it's going to measure up. So really, getting it from your foods is the best way to absolutely get it. So um, eat real food. And, it, and when we talk about real food, we're talking about the whole food plant-based diet. So you know, we don't talk about restricting food. We talk about eating. You can have all of these foods. What can you add versus what can, what you, can add? you take away? Right. And so even if you just add a smoothie a day, that is a great way to be able to get those nutrients in there. Mm -hmm. Yes, so you want to think about your microbiome. I always think of it as your compost pile. So, you know, when you have a compost pile and you're gardening and you think, well, I want this soil to be very rich and, and nutrient dense, because when I'm thinking about food and being a whole food plant based diet, I'm thinking about being a nutritarian, thinking about your nutrients in your food. So, you want this compost pile to be rich. Well, you're not going to throw um, Fruit Loops on your compost pile, you're not going to throw a steak on your compost pile, you're not going to throw a loaf of Schwebel's white bread on your compost pile you're gonna throw the tops of peppers and you're going to throw grapes and you're going to throw the rinds of oranges and grapefruits Broccoli and things like that. that you're not Absolutely, using. all those things that you, um, that will dissolve down into the soil and then it's going to be very rich. And that's kind of what you're thinking about when you're thinking about rebuilding your microbiome. Mm -hmm. And again, just like we can't share eyeglasses, we, ha we don't have that same prescription your prescription is going to be very unique. So I always suggest that people start food journaling. Ask yourself, how did I feel after that meal? Right. Did I get bloated? Did I have gas associated with it? Did I get heartburn? Did I get indigestion? Then what was that food that you ate? You know, what was it? Like start to really become aware because you are your own best healer. And I teach my patients to love the food that loves you back. I think that that's really important. You know, we're looking at trying to live beautifully mm -hmm. and age gracefully in a very stressful world that we're in right now, but we are in control of our fork and our food does matter. But I think eating for the right reasons instead of the mindless eating, really adopting that mindful eating mindful type of eating. 
policy. So sit down and ask yourself, what do I feel like my body needs right. at this point? One of the questions I often ask is, do you believe you deserve to feel well? And are the choices you're, you make, are they helpful or harmful? Some people, although they recognize, I don't usually feel good when I eat this, but they continue to eat this. We have to ask the question, why are we choosing to feel poorly? So that can get a little deeper sometimes. Right, and that is the mind-body medicine mm -hmm. piece that we really start to dig in because I think that that's, you know, th that is what matters. You have to figure out how to flip that switch mm -hmm. in your own mind and wake up and say, these are the things I'm going to do today to take care of myself. You know, and so when you're thinking about, we were talking about the colorful foods, also thinking about the prebiotics and the probiotics and the fermented foods. And we just did a social hour microbiome and microbiome for women's health mm -hmm. that are on our website at bewelltherapies.org. And we talk about the different foods. We mm -hmm. have a Japanese dietitian who's with us who taught us how to make natto. I actually made the natto. The natto has a specific bacteria in it that none of us get. It's, mm -hmm. it's not anywhere. But that may have got disrupted somewhere along the line. Exactly. You know, and again, thinking about the, the foods, thinking about the organic foods, the clean 15 versus the dirty, dirty dozen. dozen. And again, information online is, mm -hmm. is available to you. So we're thinking about what is the root cause of the illness? And again, as 100 diseases can be associated with food, we wanna make sure that we're really not just throwing a pill at every illness. You know, here's hypertension, here's a pill, here's diabetes, here's a pill. Here's skin problems, psoriasis. I, I recently just had a, a patient who had a horrible psoriasis for her entire lifetime and we changed her food. We found that it was dairy and gluten that were big disruptors for her and we pulled that back and her skin is beautiful and it's never been like that she's so excited she's so empowered she has her life back and again she's in control and she can make those choices right so um, and some people are looking at disease reversal but some people are just looking at longevity you know they're looking at anti-aging and just though just as there are foods that can help you live longer there are foods that are known to shorten your lifespan because of their impact on your health right and those are things like high sugared diets and sometimes our sugars hide in ingredients that we don't recognize as sugar which is where we need to learn to read food labels and we have that again in our mm -hmm. shop with the doc our dietitian who's not able to be with us today um, she's an integrative dietitian. She helps patients to read the food labels. So you know, it can say natural peanut butter and it has sugar in it. Natural peanut butter really is just peanuts. It's just that. Right. So you're thinking about what is the real food that you're trying to get into your body. And when we're looking at sugar, um, after eating a high sugar intake, your immune system is suppressed for two to four hours after eating that food. So that's something to consider when we look at our overall health. Is this something that is a good choice for me? Is that something I can afford to accept in my body? Yeah. So, you know, I encourage you to really look at prebiotics, uh, probiotics, mm -hmm. foods that are listed on the internet. Maybe put it on your refrigerator mm -hmm. so that you can remember you know, that you're not eating those same five foods right. every day so that you're starting to work on this variety and really every bite matters. And you don't have to stress out about it though because that goes back into that sympathetic fight or flight. And, and then the inflammation. Right, which creates that. So you, you want to just be mindful and make good choices. And if you don't make a good choice what at one moment, mm -hmm. make a better choice in the next moment. You, right. And that's again mindfulness. The mindfulness is not thinking of the past because then you can get frustrated or depressed or disappointed in yourself and not worry about the future because none of us really know what that's going to look like but just being in this moment and what does this moment look like for you right. you definitely have the ability as long as you're breathing to make a choice make and so just ask yourself what choice do I want to make to make myself feel well right. so we're going to talk a little bit about I think I want to talk about leaky gut absolutely you know, because I think that that really is something that um, you're hearing a lot about and what the heck is leaky gut you know when we're thinking about the digestive system it's supposed to be a closed system and foods go through but people end up with a leaky gut and they have reactions to foods that they may not otherwise and I start to look at food allergy panels sometimes on patients and when I see 
five to ten things popping positive on there, I'm not. I'm no longer thinking that this is really just true food allergy. I'm thinking this is probably a leaky gut. Mm. But we can repair the leaky gut. We can repair it by doing things like the biome broth. Mm -hmm. um, I just uh, recently in our in our lecture, our social hour that we did on microbiome, uh, I was talking about the book Fiber Fuel that Dr. B, the gastroenterologist wrote, which is amazing. It's our really, probably I think our first gastroenterologist who wrote a book on the microbiome and gives tons of recipes. And there's a biome broth in there that is vegan, you know, or whole food plant-based. Mm -hmm. um, so I know some people think about doing bone broth to repair the leaky gut, but there's actually something that can be a whole food plant-based biome broth. And um, so when, once you repair that, uh, then you're not going to have that inflammatory reaction occur when you eat those foods. Right. So just because you react to something now doesn't mean you're going to react to it forever. Right. So peanuts is a big one. Mm -hmm. You know, so people start to develop these peanut allergies over time, and they people say to me, "Oh, I've eaten this my whole life. I'm not having a problem." But you don't know. We our systems are definitely changing and we every moment. Change and much like um, our nervous system changes in every second based on our thoughts, based on our actions our microbiome changes throughout the day. And we might um, feel and have a microbiome that's in one state on one day, and three days later it might be completely different. So everything, the only constant is change. So we have to be able to not get set in our ways, which is where eating those same five foods comes from. We need to adapt, we need to be open to change. Yeah, and so even thinking about the repair of things too, talking about things like intermittent fasting and time-restricted feeding, you know, you can um, pick a window that's right for you. Maybe your window is noon to eight that you eat. Um, I'm actually um, time-restricted feeding today. I haven't had anything yet today except water and my tea uh, and my black coffee. I had one cup of black coffee this morning. So choosing that because what you're doing when you're picking that eating window, that you're only thinking about food for eight hours of the day instead of 24 hours out of the day, and you are resting your digestive system. So that repair of that microbiome, that repair of that leaky gut can occur better, mm -hmm. faster, because you are not activating your other cellular functions. Your, your body has to work really hard to take care of everything to mm -hmm. keep you healthy and well. But if it's just focusing on digestion for six hours a day or eight hours a day, you'll heal faster. Mm -hmm. So I don't want to discount the fact that we can speed up this process by, mm -hmm. by throwing in some time-restricted feeding and intermittent fasting. And the window, it's what's right for you. Mm -hmm. You know, Maybe it's just that you say, I'm not, I have one patient who said, the kitchen closes at eight. It was amazing. She just she did so much better because she just told herself that. The kitchen's closed. She said, I even told the dog. The dog was looking at me for a treat, and she was like, sorry, the kitchen's closed. And in line with that, one of the things it falls in line with another disruptor is when we eat too late in the evening, and then we go to bed, because your body is constantly making a choice. Where am I sending my energy? And when you're sleeping, it's not going to be working to digest your food. So the food will sit in your guts, for lack of a better phrase. And the longer it sits there, we tend to get bloating and distension. And then we come into this disruption. And here we are again, and we're not feeling well or moving well in the morning because now we have to have our system go into overdrive, so to speak. So um, taking time to complete your last meal within a good three hours before you're going to bed is can be incredibly helpful. Mm -hmm. And then following the intermittent fasting goes along with that, right? We're giving our body time. Because what is sleep, right? Sleep is the time to repair. Mm -hmm. That's our restorative function. And so we should not be getting up in the middle of the night to go to the refrigerator to grab something to eat. If you wake up and you feel hungry, just breathe, mm -hmm. activate that breath. You know, do some soft belly breathing because I think that that is something you always have. And, and, and that's, you know, when people wake up in the middle of the night, you can just mm -hmm. count your breath. Remember back when they said count sheep? You know, that's what you're doing. You're really just laying meditating. there, meditating, trying not to think of all the things mm -hmm. you didn't get done in the day, trying not to worry about everything that you have to do tomorrow, but really just coming into your breath and mm -hmm. using your breath and counting your breath and doing the, you know, when you breathe in, say soft, when you breathe out, say belly, or counting your breath because it's super boring and then you're just going to fall back yeah. to sleep because you know that's all you're supposed to be thinking about thoughts are going to come let them come 
and then let them go. Let them go. Let them go. And so, you know, there's a lot of research that's out there now on food, and it gets very confusing for people. And I think it's important that we bring up food shaming and food judging mm -hmm. because what's right for you is not what's right for the next person. I know for a fact, Melissa and I have different diets, mm -hmm. um, and I call it diet loosely. I don't like the word diet, but yeah. what else, you know, can you really put that word there? But right. I have to do something different for my body than she has to do for her body. And that can change from day to day. Right. So again, as you're rebuilding the microbiome, you may be able to start to add in little foods. Um, we wouldn't want you to add in peanuts if you have a peanut allergy, right. unless done in, a, in an allergist's office or done safely with a, a doctor's supervision for sure. Um, but you can add in, so maybe you eat beans and you get bloating with beans, but maybe you can start to eat just a bite just a bite a day right. and that shifts that microbiome. You need to give yourself permission. Give yourself permission to explore and to change and to adapt because even in that mind process, that will reduce the inflammatory response, the stress response. Right, and you can't, so if you, again, you can't judge another person because you don't know what they're going through, you can't shame them because what's right for you is not what's right for the next person. Right. And then that adds stress. And we don't want stress associated with eating at all. No. Not even with your own plate. You should sit down with your plate and think about, these foods are going to nourish my body, they're going to heal my body, and having faith in your body. I right. think that's the other Thoughts thing. Thoughts become things. You need to believe that the choices you're making are going to help you. Yes, and, I, and, ha and trust your body, mm -hmm. because your body will not fail you until you're no longer breathing. And then, we don't have to worry about making those choices anyway because we're no longer breathing. But I always say, as long as we have our breath, there's more right with us than wrong with mm -hmm. us. So use that, activate that breath because I think it's powerful. Right. Do you want to take a break actually? And we can just kind of, you know, um, give you a couple shots of the resort and, and then we'll jump back in in a minute. Yeah. Okay, so we're just gonna really wrap up with what do you do now, right? How do you implement these things into your life and how do you make a change? And, you know, um, this would not be complete if I didn't tell you to think about fiber. <laughs> um, the dietitians would have my head if mm -hmm. I didn't say fiber, 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 fiber. And fiber is, is in, you know, a lot of the whole food plant-based diets. So, right. you know, think about fiber. If you're just gonna make one change, just say tomorrow I'm just going to add fiber or... And then add water. Add water, oh, water, We need water. water to move the fiber. And hydration, the majority of us are clinically dehydrated. Yes. We need to focus on, to move our entire system, we have to have water as the catalyst. And Looking at half of your body weight in ounces is where the research consistently keeps us as hydrated. But if you know that you do not drink maybe even eight ounces of water a day, you can't just go pedal to the metal. Yeah. You need to start slowly adding in water. And yes, you'll be making more frequent trips to the restroom, but it's so important to every aspect of our body. Yeah, and particularly I, digestion. And if you can't remember, put an alarm on your phone. Mm -hmm. Every hour on the hour, have I taken a sip? You know, mm -hmm. because it is, and sometimes we need to do that to create it's a full time these, job, create these habits. So, as we are wrapping up here at the Avalon's Grand Resort, talking to you about microbiome and inflammatory reaction in lifestyle medicine, uh, we just wanted to give you our website again, www.bewellstherapies, T H E R A P I E S dot org. And you can email either Dr. Melissa Kerr or myself, Dr. Michelle Thompson, uh, to find out more information about what we do. Check out our website. We actually have a sound therapy team, Marie and Calvin Wagner with the Center for Sound Therapy in Boardman, Ohio. Mm -hmm. Uh, a lot of different resources on integrative and lifestyle medicine, uh, dietitians that you can you know, utilize and just get more information and help. But the things to leave you with, Dr. Curry, you were? We want to make sure we're looking at what are the ways we can ultimately reduce stress which reduces our inflammation. When we have that as our kind of launching point, we can then better absorb the nutrients when we make choices with high nutrient dense foods, we add our fibers, we drink our water, we're looking at sleep, we're looking at our relationships, we're looking, and that could be with people, with work, with our environment, we're looking at movement, we're looking at all of these lifestyle pieces that collectively help our microbiome 
biome flourish. And with that, I want to end with uh, a great big thank you to Ron and Franny Klingel for giving us this space here. Um, the Avalon Grand Resort is a beautiful location that offers all of these things that we're talking about mm -hmm. and the life-changing wellness weekends to really help wherever you are on your journey in health and wellness so that we can help you to be your own best healer. So we hope that you have a wonderful day and be well.